Hi folks, Steve Gallia from Algonquin Fly Tying Supply. Normally when we shoot these videos we focus on the hook so we can show you a technique or how to tie a particular pattern. But today we're going to focus on the fly tire and in particular the environmental conditions that are required so that we can enjoy fly tying for one but also be a little more successful at it. So I'm talking about environmental conditions around our, our fly tying bench or, or location that, uh, that basically promote success. Um, one of the things, it's, it's immediate, it's, um, you know, it's, almost, it's obvious, but you know, I, I don't see a lot of fly tires with, with, with this you know, um, downright. And I'm talking about lighting. You know, good lighting is critical to fly tying. If you don't have good lighting, you're not gonna tie too many flies because your eyes are gonna get sore or tired it's going to be um, harder to see the details required to make sure your, your flies come together okay. It can be a real issue. So what you need to do as a fly tire is find a place where you can have good natural lighting if you tie in the daytime. But most times we don't tie in the daytime. We often tie after dinner or that kind of thing. So you want a place where you've got good, even, soft lighting all around you. It shouldn't be harsh. It shouldn't throw a lot of shadows. It should illuminate everything you're trying to do and um, it, should, uh, it should allow you to work uh, in comfort without uh, having to squint or, or to strain your eyes. And this is me straining my eyes, that kind of thing. You don't want to do that. You want good lighting. How you get there is really your business. You know, I, I'm not here to be an expert on lighting. I'm certainly not. But, you know, um, use whatever you can to, to get yourself good lighting that you're comfortable with. That's, that's critical to fly tying. If you don't have that, you've got some issues. The next thing is along the same lines. You need to have visual acuity to see that fly. Now when you're younger, that's not an issue. You just look at it. Most, most young people have really good eyes and they can, they can see these flies and the fine detail and all the rest. But you come to a certain age, and that's an age I passed about 10 years ago, when your eyes aren't what they used to be. I don't wear glasses in day-to-day -day life. I, I do need them for reading on occasion, um, but for fly tying, it's critical that I have some sort of magnification, because if I don't have it, I just don't see the, the fly as I used to. Um, in these videos, you're often seeing me wear uh, my, uh, my headgear. It's something that uh, sort of enhances my eyes. Uh, it brings out my eyes, I guess. But it also helps me fly ties, or fly ties, tie flies beautifully. Um, this, is, this is a... Uh, magnifying uh, headgear that you can get at most craft shops. It's used by jewelers, people who uh, fool with beads and, and do all sorts of other crafts. And uh, they're not expensive, they're not inexpensive either, but they're certainly worthwhile. Um, since I've got this, my, my flies have improved considerably because I was starting to uh, work um, basically out of, off memory rather than by what I was seeing. When I got that, I started seeing the details again, and that made a huge difference. In my bench downstairs, where I normally tie my flies, I have a uh, Magnafly. You may have heard of these units. It's just a magnifying gla uh, glass for, meant for fly tying, and uh, it's got a, a magnifying glass right here and LED lights that actually point at the fly. And I've got overhead lights and a couple of lamps off to the side, so I get a nice, even, soft light on the fly. And with, the, with this unit here, my little, uh, little Batman helmet and the Magnafly, um, I really get to see all the details and it allows me to be a lot more careful and a lot more precise with how I tie it. And that's, that's really important. The next thing you want is something that a lot of us don't really uh, think of. And that is you want a, uh, a, an ergonomic workspace. You want a space that makes tying flies comfortable. Not just one, one fly, but if you want to tie a dozen, two dozen flies in a sitting, you want a place where at the end of that two dozen flies, you're not going to feel like your, your, your shoulder or your arms were sore because you had to reach in awkward ways or, or the bench was too high or too low. Um, so you want, uh, and, and your chair, you want a good chair so your back doesn't hurt and all the rest of that stuff. But... Along with, along with that ergonomic, um, you know, setup, you want a setup that's not distracting. It's hard to, to fl uh, tie flies when you're being distracted. I mean, you can tie them, but you might not do the same job you do when you can really focus on the techniques. So what I like uh, to have is 
a fly tying place where I can uh, tie these flies undisturbed. Um, I happen to have my shop in my basement. It is my little uh, man cave. Nobody bothers me there. If I'm, if I'm tying flies, they know I'm there uh, to relax and unwind and they let me do so. And you need that sort of situation too. The next thing you need is uh, a mental attitude and that mental attitude is to give yourself some time. Um, fly tying is not a uh, competitive sport where you need to rush. Uh, a lot of people will rush their fly tying, but they're called, uh, you know, uh, professional fly tires, and they do it for a living, and, and so they need to put out a lot of flies, you know, in an efficient amount of time. But for the rest of us, we're doing this as a pastime, we're trying to enjoy it. So you need to actually put it in your head that it doesn't matter how long it takes for you to, to tie this fly, so long as you do it right. It's better to do it slow and right than fast and incorrectly. So, so that's important, have that mental attitude. And the last thing I think um, that, that makes for really good flies is a mentor. If you um, don't have a mentor, if you don't know anyone that ties flies, one of the best places to, to find people like that is, is to join your local fly fishing club if there happens to be one around. Um, you know, they're great places, not just for the social aspect of it, but because when you're there, you're going to meet people of all levels of experience, and there there are probably tires that are better than you there, if not better uh, at tying, you know, all manner of flies, maybe better at tying a particular type of fly. Maybe they're better at tying nymphs. Maybe they're better at tying muddler minnows. Um, there may be people that, that may not be as advanced as you in tying flies, but you still might learn something from them because they've probably talked to a whole different group of people and picked up a trick, trick or two. So when you're at a club and when you're with like-minded people who tie flies, you're, you're really upping your education in, on this pastime. So it's important. And it's a lot of fun too. Joining, joining a club is, is a whole lot of fun. You get good people and, and you get to meet good people, find new waters, just have a lot of fun with like-minded individuals. So those are my basic tips for setting up the right mindset and environment for tying flies. Um, it's not rocket science. You've probably all thought of these things before, but I, I would urge you um, to really have a good look at all of these things and, and make sure you're, you're making the most of them all because um, when you do, your flies improve and so does your enjoyment of, of the pastime. That's it for now. Uh, Steve Galley for Algonquin Fly Tying Supply. Check us out at algonquinflytying.com. Thank you.